Hi everybody, so today we're going to discuss the final part of the psychobiotic revolution. So it's how do we actually take care of our gut health? The most important question. Um, so your first act on your psychobiotic journey is going to be rebuilding your gut and taking the steps to heal any lesions or permeability, like that leaky gut, if anyone's ever heard of that. Um, all that means is the permeability is like very loose and we need to tighten it up. Um, and there are a number of possible causes for these. It could be distress, um, infections, inflammation, chronic stress, overuse of painkillers, continued or repeated rounds of antibiotics, excessive alcohol consumption, autoimmune disorders like lupus, IBD, IBS, gluten sensitivity, food allergies, uh, radiation, chemotherapy, overeating, and lack of exercise are all things that can lead to gut lesions and kind of just like a really, really large amount of permeability. So a lot of the times be like, okay, well, what probiotics should I take? And that really depends on what your gut microbiota is and what it's lacking. So when choosing a probiotic to help give your gut the good stuff, you'll want to take note of kind of the main features of the bottle. So the product name, the manufacturer name, the contact info, claims dosage format, suggested use, warning, supplement facts, the percent daily value, other ingredients, expiration date, lot number, and quality seals. The bacteria should be compatible with one another in a combined psychobiotic formula. So it's useful to note that most like bifido and lacto species um, are going to be like your best bet. Um, for example, mine is refrigerated. I have both bifido and lacto in mine um, because those are the ones that I'm lacking and my gut microbe is like very high in like a bunch of different lacto species. So those are the ones um, that I have. And if you do want to know what's in your gut, you would just take a GI map test. It's a stool sample at home. You send it in, you get it back and it tells you um, what your gut, your gut microbiome is and like what's in there. Um, so you can take a probiotic based off of that. It's also going to tell you if you have like any like gut dysbiosis, like if there's an overrun of bad bacteria, if you have um, SIBO, if you have um, a candida infection in your gut, um, those type of things all get found from a GI map. I love GI maps. I think they're very uh, good tests to run. Um, so if you are curious on that, that's what it's called. Um, but remember, not all probiotics are reliable. So one lovely study showed um, that out of 13 commonly available products, only four contained what was claimed on the label. Because again, FDA does not approve things that are supplements. So you need to make sure that you're doing your research. Um, the few that have been found to be reliable are called ProBioStick, VSL number three, Mutaflor, Align, Culturel, Floristore, Yakult, and Activia, like the yogurt activity, or the yogurt Activia. Um, please note though, that eating the right kinds of food has always been and is still the best way to achieve and maintain a healthy gut and will always be better than taking a pill form of a probiotic. If you can get it from real food, it's going to be better. Um, supplements are meant to supplement the diet, not replace. Remember that. That's a huge thing when it comes to supplements. You cannot eat a bad diet and take supplements and be like, I'm getting it. That's not how it works. Um, you should be eating more vegetables and fruit and kind of less of like the not so great meats. So like the fatty, fatty meats, not something that you really want to be eating every day. You know, special occasion, sure, but you want to be eating like the lean meats and things like that including the lean like beef, like that 90-10 or that 95-5 or whatever. Um, among other good things, fruits and vegetables contain a substance called polyphenols uh, that are important to your health. So polyphenols act as antioxidants protecting you against pathogens as well as diabetes, heart disease, and neurological problems. They are, however, largely useless um, unless your microbiota is healthy and can properly break them down. So in my case, for instance, I have an overrun of unhealthy bacteria in my gut. Even though I was eating a very, very healthy diet um, of a variety of fruits and veggies, I was not absorbing anything. And that can lead to like malabsorption and malnutrition. Um, so you want to make sure that your gut is able to absorb the things that you're giving it. Um, some of your friendly gut bacteria really, really like fiber, bifido bacteria, um, consumes the fiber moving through your intestines and produces butyric acid as a byproduct. So butyric acid turns out to be a super fuel for cells lining your gut. It helps rebuild your lining on a continuous basis. 
um, which is what we want, especially if we're causing those like tears, those rips, those like permeability measures where your gut just gets a little bit more leaky. It will help to rebuild. Um, butyric acid can also affect your brain, encouraging the production of the feel-good neurotransmitters. Um, so kind of like going into refined food. The problem with refined food is that it takes no account of your gut bacteria. So we uh, what we gave up was like our manna for our, micro our microbes, our microbiota, because I like fiber and processed foods don't have any of that. Um, today we recognize uh, the fiber processed out of refined foods as prebiotic. Uh, so food for gut bacteria is prebiotics. Uh, manufacturers can't force us to eat the healthy foods, so they are in the business of selling what people will buy. So if more people demanding are demanding the missing fiber from their processed foods, the sooner new products will show up and we can then be eating a healthier diet. Um, so fiber comes in soluble and insoluble forms. Insoluble fiber doesn't dissolve in water, mostly passes through your gut quickly, um, kind of just helps like push your poop out. Soluble fiber, on the other hand, is like really where it's at. It's the prebiotics. So prebiotic foods are going to include sunchokes, artichokes, chicory, endive, lentils, asparagus, beans, especially lima beans, onions, garlic, leeks, bananas, beets, broccoli, and fennel root um, are some really good prebiotics. Uh, many studies of gut healthy diets recommend the Mediterranean diet, uh, but other studies have found more species of gut bacteria, lowered anxiety, and improved cognition on a diet that includes lean beef. Um, this is likely because it's a greater diversity in your diet. So if you've ever heard variety, I always tell you guys to eat the rainbow you know, but still have a variety in that rainbow is going to help you to kind of shove all of those microbes into your body, whatever's going to get there through your stomach acid to grow your microbiota and to make it more diverse. And that's going to help out so that not one will overrun another one and make it a dysbiosis. Um, making sure that you are eating fermented foods, um, super, super good probiotics in fermented foods. Um, and that's going to include yogurts and like, um, sauerkraut and things like that. Uh, you want to look for live and active, at, me, 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 live and active cultures, um, on that seal to ensure the product has living probiotics in it. If you're trying yogurt for the first time as a pro, as a probiotic, um, give yourself four weeks of a daily serving to see if it works for you. If you get bloated, you get diarrhea, back off on your serving size. Um, many yogurts though are packed with sugar, which pretty much negates their probiotic a benefit. So make sure you read the label and choose a yogurt with no added sugar. Go for full fat if you can find it or reduced fat, but stay away from anything that says fat free. Um, the biggest psychobiotic contributed to your diet should still be leafy greens and vegetables. Uh, fruits, nuts, berries are important and so are fish again and fermented foods. Um, you should consider probiotic supplement an important but relatively small player in the mix of what you eat for good health and good mood. As far as a healthy, diverse microbiota is concerned, diet turns out to trump environment and geography. So like, again, diet over everything. Um, going into kind of like what Americans eat, Western cultures, like studies have shown, so a high fat, low fiber diet is gonna increase inflammation and endotoxins, illness inducing chemicals released by certain injured or killed bacteria by like 70%. Um, high fat and high sugar diets increase inflammation, the source of much, uh, at least most of the disease and discomfort in our lives and can actually degrade your blood brain barrier, that BBB, allowing dangerous toxins to access your brain. Because again, the gut brain connection. Um, minimize sugar. Sugar can make you happier, but the effect is temporary. Long term sugar use can make you sick, inflamed and depressed. Um, fortunately, we do have really, really good sugar substitutes, real maple syrup. Honey has been shown to decrease ed uh, edema and lower inflammation. You want to make sure you're getting plenty of omega-3s and omega-6s. Um, saturated fats, so think those that are solid at room temperature. Um, those ones can kind of cause inflammation and gut distress. Um, but omega-3 oils are the opposite. So those are the polyunsaturated. Um, olive oil, nut oils, oils that are naturally occurring in fish. 
uh, making sure that we have that omega-3 because deficiency in that leads to microbial overgrowth in the small intestine, which is related to IBS um, and inflammation, whereas a diet rich in omega-3s dampens inflammation and improves the diversity of your microbiota. So these oils are also essential for creating new nerves and synapses um, kind of in your brain and all over your body, and that can improve cognition and memory. Drink less alcohol. That's it on that one. Uh, get antioxidants from food. Antioxidants are your body's way of fighting off the damage brought by ordinary metabolic processes. So certain antioxidant foods, so coffee, cocoa, green tea, turmeric, strawberries, and blueberries have been shown to lower the risk of depression and cognitive decline. So just adding berries to your diet can delay mental decline by two and a half years or more. So make sure you're eating those berries, especially now that they're in season. Um, you want to avoid emulsifiers. So two commercially important emulsifiers, it's called CMC or carboxymethyl, carboxymethyl cellulose, there we go, and polysorbate 80 or P80, um, have been shown to negatively affect both the thickness of your gut mucosa and the diversity of your microbiota. Uh, lectithin, originally isolated from egg yolk and now also derived from soybeans, is a pretty good substitute for that. Uh, because it doesn't really include the same dysbiotic effect as CMC and PAD. Minimize your use of protein pump inhibitors and H2 blockers. Exercise, also very important. It's always difficult to overstate the benefit of low to medium levels of exercise, which improves pretty much every system in your body. <coughs> Although there are many ways to help your gut, um, there's also many ways in which your gut can be hurt. And people under chronic stress are one of those. Um, they often change their eating habits. Um, a lot of times people that are chronically stressed overeat um, just as a coping mechanism. Psychological stress elevates circulating ghrelin, which stimulates the preference for calorie rich comfort foods. And these foods activate the reward circuits. So that's gonna also include dopamine, reducing stress induced anxiety and depression. Um, but it was found that a high fat diet protects against um, the effects of chronic stress. So make sure you're eating your avocados every day and those olive oils, avocado oils, all of that good stuff. Um, nuts, seeds, all of that good, all of the goodness. Um, also kind of unhelpful, in the last century, the government decided to recommend high levels of carbs in the diet. The food pyramid was published and widely circulated uh, that placed bread and pasta at the foundation of your diet, which it shouldn't be. Um, it was a bad decision based on bad science, and it's something that we talked about back in Good Calories, Bad Calories, um, and it's taken far too long to like redress the error. Uh, they are delicious, but they can become not great when fiber is refined out. Um, so like, if you are having bread, make sure you know it's sprouted, it's whole grain, it's getting all of that fiber put back in at least, or never even taken out. Um, another thing is the microbiota of people with obesity. Um, they squeeze out the last bit of energy of each morsel that they eat. So people with obesity appear to have excess quantities of bilophila. Um, that is a type of micro. Um, it's a family of bacteria that loves bile and bile is necessary to digest meats and fats. But bilophilia also appears to secrete toxins that may in turn lead to chronic inflammation and also affect your mood. Uh, modern processed foods were developed in most part and for the U.S., we have a tradition of going back hundreds of years and resulting in a mix poorly vetted, inconsistent cuisine. So like, if you think of the US, we don't really have a food. Our food is like hot dogs, um, is the one that I can think of, which is just, you know, hot dogs. Um, we eat corn products, like they're going out of style. You know, we spread our kind of cheap treats all over the world and where that happens, Western diseases and obesity uh, follow very closely behind. So it is in the way that our processed foods affect us, they're gonna start affecting everyone um, that buys them. The diets that we need to strive for, and when I say diet, I don't mean like a restriction in calories or a restriction of a food group. I just mean like your overall eating habit. Um, we wanna to strive to have fiber, probiotics, prebiotics, healthy whole foods. Um, the, the items that are most desirable for our well-balanced microbiota, again, variety is key. Western food has lost both of those things. Probiotic foods like sauerkraut um, have often been abandoned because refrigeration. Um, and a lot of store-bought fermented products like sauerkraut are now likely pasteurized, uh, meaning that the microbes have been killed. 
Um, so you want to make sure that you're looking for, again, those live and active cultures when you are looking for things like sauerkraut and things like that to really get the benefit of them. Um, but remember, real food is king to a healthy gut and variety. Eat all of the things, not processed foods, not prepackaged foods, but eat your fruits, your vegetables, your lean meats, your nuts, your seeds, your oils, your good fats, all of those. Um, if you have any questions, drop a comment below.